late into the evening here. So uh, if I could ask Sky uh, to go ahead and get us rolling here. Excellent. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Sky. Um, good evening, everyone. Today is January 13, 2022. Uh, the time is 6.10 p.m. And uh, we are gathered for the Pawnee Business Council special meeting. I'd like to call that meeting uh, to order at this time and ask Councilwoman uh, Kimball if she would uh, uh, render an opening invocation for our, our gathering here before we begin the uh, uh, work of the nation tonight. Thank you, President Echohawk. If you would kindly bow your heads with me and pray with me this evening. Heavenly Father God, we come to you uh, after a beautiful day, Heavenly Father. Thankful for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon each of us. We're mindful, God, of all of our mourners today and those that are sick and infirmed, our elders, God, our service people, our children like that. As that you be with this council, God, as we make decisions for our nation here, Heavenly Father. As that you just take care and cleanse our, our uh, reserve, God, of, of this horrible COVID uh, variant that is uh, plowing through today. Our community, Heavenly Father. Um, our schools like that, even the city of Pawnee shutting down like that, God. Um, ask your abundant blessings for each of us and that you just uh, continue to uh, walk with us, dear God, as we make our decisions tonight. Asking all this in Christ Jesus' name, amen. Noah, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Councilwoman Kimball. Appreciate so, that. Um, so uh, with that, um, May I uh, ask uh, uh, Secretary Gardapi if he would call our roll, please? Yes, uh, Walter Eckerhawk. Pete Ducku. Jordan Canujo. Here. George Gardapi. Carol Chapman. Here. Cynthia Butler. Here. Donna here. Pete Ducku. Gene Evans. Here. Sammy Kimball. Yeah. Excellent. We have all hands on deck and uh, quorum is present. So our uh, first first item of, uh, of business is to approve the agenda, please. And uh, uh, we have it before us. And uh, Mr. Secretary, I understand we do have changes or amendments to it. So if you could uh, illuminate us on that, please. Yeah, the very first change was the, the time from 5.30 to 6. Uh, thank you, Vice President, for for uh, forcing me to remember that. <laughs> so that's the first change. And then under new business, uh, A through F, we're going to put under budget committee recommendations. Um, normally, Jamie prepares this, and she's been out. I forgot to put budget committee recommendations. Uh, number two would be the approval of resolution 2201 Table Creek Treaty, the annuity drawdown. And then under our executive session, uh, we're going to do a number two uh, discussion or action title insurance for the waters property. Uh, number three discussion or action intergovernmental relations with local governments. Number four will be discussion in or action M30 PLLC tribal Adv advocacy group proposal. And then finally, number five will be the discussion in or action on COVID update. And those are all the changes. Um, and also, I, we did take out uh, open forum because we are not going to be live streaming tonight. We have uh, sta our staff members are all out that that do that. Um, so every our our constituents will have to uh, you know access this later after we're, we're, the meeting's over. Uh, Jordan, did you have a uh, recommendation or change? Uh, yes, thank you, Secretary, Secretary Gardner. Um, you know, since we're not having an open forum, I hope we can get this video of our council meeting up pretty soon. I know some of the tribal members that keep up with business of the Pawnee Nation, so hopefully we can get this up for them uh, in a timely manner. Um, I was looking through the uh, the amended agenda and. To me, I see there's a lot of executive session items. I was wondering if we can move some of those into the into the new business. Um, 
I don't know what intergovernmental relations with local governments. I don't know what's uh, sensitive about that topic that we have to have it in executive session. I would assume some of our tribal members would want to be queried to what's going on in that discussion. And then item four, I was looking over the proposal for uh, M30 and it's uh, M36. I think six needs to be added to that as well. Oh. Um, Okay. And I didn't see anything really um, sensitive or anything proprietary on that as well. I don't see why we couldn't move that into under new business. And then um, I would even probably recommend COVID update as well. I don't know if we have any sensitive information that we want to have to do that in executive session. Yeah. Just trying to keep, keep a lot of this as open as we can to our tribal members. That would be my recommendation. I think the, the COVID update we should keep in executive. There are some probably some sensitive uh, okay. information we'll be talking about, but uh, as far as me, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm not the one that requested those be in executive session. Uh, maybe daughters was that. I'm not sure. The intergovernmental um, relations. Yes, um, President Echohawk thought that those, you know, um, ought to be in executive session. I'm okay with it either way. Like Jordan, I think we need to do as much in open, um, in a, in the open meeting as possible. Uh, Donna, so are you, are you, I, the, one, are yeah. you the one uh, bringing this mm -hmm. to the agenda? Yes. If you're okay with it, yes. Then can I'll, you hear me? Yeah, I can. I'm sorry. Uh, I was, if you're yeah. okay with it, okay. I wouldn't mind moving those to the new business. Yeah. What about you, President Echohawk? Uh, I think I'm good with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good suggestion, Jordan. I appreciate that. Oh, no problem. Thank you. So we'll move those two items up then into the new business, uh, new items uh, three and four. Is that Yeah, we correct? can just transfer those from executive to new business. Uh, same numbers, three and four. And then that will change the update, COVID update under executive number three. So. Secretary Gardipi? Yes. So I also agree with uh, Vice President Canujo in that one transparent with the COVID uh, updates, you know, as much as we know, right? But I think there's just a couple things that um, I think, you know, are privileged and we should probably keep uh, a, a little piece of that in, in executive session if that's going to be okay with everybody. Yeah. We, should, we should tell the people what's going on and what we're trying to do. Yeah, I think once we, once we come out, we, maybe we can uh, let everybody know what we, what, what we can talk about and just give everybody an update on yeah. what we talk about. Thank you. Okay, uh, any further uh, changes on this agenda, please? President Echohawk, this is Cynthia. Yes, ma'am. Could we, is there possibility of moving the title insurance for the water's property up there? I, I don't see what would be confidential about insurance. Uh, I, I think uh, I think I would agree with that as well. Yeah, I, that's that's what I was thinking too. Okay. Okay, you have that, uh, Mr. Secretary, that change as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, any other changes, folks? President Echohawk, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with um, changes. This is Cynthia. I'll second that. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the agenda with the changes uh, discussed. Any further discussion on the motion, folks? Hearing that, call for the vote, please, Mr. Secretary. Jordan Canujo? Yes. George Garter, yes. Carol Chapman? Yes. Cynthia Butler? Yes. Gene Evans? Yes. Sammy Kimball? Yes. Thank you, Council. Motion carries.
with that. That's uh, it. Yes, from me too, George. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss you? Oh, did I missed her. <laughs> no, George missed me. George missed me. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> hey, you know I did these. I did these PVC dots, you know, for Rome, and I and I totally missed it, that whole thing. I was like, like, so my mistake. I'm sorry, uh, Council. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, with apologies to Councilwoman here, motion does carry. And so we do have an agenda. And uh, let's just launch right into the new business then. And the first item, uh, we have a number of uh, budget committee recommendations. And the first one up is approval of uh, 4129 IHS CV tracing behavior health. BH budget mod number one. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and who is going to present on that, please? Okay, uh, I can do that, President. Uh, this is um, putting uh, money and supplies to help with COVID. It comes out of um, one of uh, Tiffany's departments, and it is to help the COVID division to uh, provide resources to assist uh, uh, applicants who are having issues with COVID. So it's putting extra money in just for COVID right now to assist assistance. Thank you, uh, Carol. Um, folks, are there any questions of, of, of uh, Treasurer Chapman on this? Oh, there's President uh, Biden. Hey, President Biden is with us tonight. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll make the motion to go ahead and approve that. I'll second. OK, we have a motion and we have a second to approve uh, this. Uh, any discussion on the motion, please? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, call for the vote, please. Jordan Canujo. Hang on, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. My computer was lagging, sorry. <laughs> George Garter P, yes. Carol Chapman? Yes. Cynthia Butler? Yes. Donna Hare? Aho. <laughs> Gene Evans? Yes. Sammy Campbell? Yes. yes. Thank you, Council. Motion carries. Next item up is approval of uh, 4078 Education Division Budget Mod Number One. And uh, Carol, are you going to be uh, presenting on that one as well? Yes. Um, okay. This is uh, the council had passed the six percent COA, and uh, this uh, department received more federal funding. And what they've done is put more and in, transferred into scholarships. Professional services, COLA, and training. So that's that's all the the things they did with this money, moving it around. Okay, thank you for that. Council, any questions, comments? If no more comments, I'll call for the motion. Make motion. There a second. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you got it, George. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any uh, comment or discussion on the motion, please? Hearing none, call for the vote, please, sir. Jordan Canujo? Yes. George Garter, P. Yes. Carol Chapman? Yes. Cynthia Butler? Yes. Donna Hare? Uh, yes. Dean Evans? Yes. Sammy Kimball. Yes. Thank you, Council. Motion carries. Um, next item C is approval of 1007-136 uh, compliance budget mod number one. And Treasurer Chapman. Okay, yes. This is um, 
PBC had approved the addition of a compliance department, and this is the addition of the compliance budget, and it's taken from the uh, PBC approved procurement budget. So that's what that's what this one is. Thank you, Treasurer Chapman. Folks, questions of Carol? If Hearing not. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Dr. Evans. We have a motion and we have a second. Any discussion on the motion, please? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Secretary, if you'd call for the vote, please, sir. Jordan Canujo. Yes. George Card, P.S. Carol Chapman. Yes. Cynthia Butler. Yes. Donna Hare. I hope yes. Gene Evans. Yes. Sammy Kimball. Yes. Thank you, Council. Motion carries. Next item is number D. Approval of uh, 10007-136 compliant budget bond number two. Yes. President, this is um, goes right along with the uh, uh, mod one that we just went over, and it is adding COLA from the previous budget. That's all this one's doing. Thank you for that explanation, uh, folks. Any uh, questions of uh, Carol, please? I'll make a motion. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you for the second, Dr. Evans. Okay, Council, uh, any further comment on the motion, please? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, will you please call for the vote? Jordan Canujo? Yes. George Gard, P. Yes. Carol Chapman? Yes. Cynthia Butler? Yes. Donna Hare? On vote, yes. Gene Evans? Yes. Sammy Kimball? Yes. Thank you, Council. Motion carries. Next up is item E, approval of 1007-133, uh, planning budget mod number one. Yes, President, this is the uh, planning department and it's, uh, it is, uh, we as the PBC already approved this budget. And what it is doing is removing all the grants and contracts expenses and just leaving a, a little bit in there for the planning director and the assistant. And it goes right along with this next one we're going to come up on this this uh, mod two. OK. Folks, any questions of uh, Treasurer Chapman on this, please? Um, President. Yes, sir. Uh, I was just going to also comment on this as well. You'll notice that 76,148, that mm -hmm. is what you will see in that um, budget we just approved for the compliance department. That's where the money is going. They're basically shifting that money over. This was the result of the uh, the change to our org chart, so they were just making those up updates. I just wanted to kind of comment on what that negative number was for. Uh, thank you for that, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Any other uh, comments or questions, please? Hearing none, is there a motion, please, to approve? I'll make a I'll motion. Make, I'll second. Thank you, Council. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion, please? Hearing none, call for the vote, Mr. Sec Secretary. Jordan Canujo? Yes. George Gard, P.S. Carol Chapman? Yes. Cynthia Butler? Yes. Donna Hare? Uh, yes. Dean Evans? Yes. Sammy Kimball? Yes. Thank you, Council. Motion carries. Um, let's see. I think uh, we have uh, the last item being approval of uh, 1007 133 planning budget mod number two. Is that correct? Or did yes. we just approve that? Okay, we do. Okay, floor is yours, please. Yes, uh, this one is uh, the only thing it's adding cola 
for the uh, planning director and the assistant. OK, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank I'll you. We have a motion. A second. And a second. Oh. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Secretary uh, Gardip, he beat you to the punch on that second. And um, is there any discussion now then on the motion, please, folks? <laughs> Hearing none, call for the vote, please. Jordan Canuho? Yes. George Gardip, yes. Carol Chapman? Yes. Cynthia Butler? Yes. Donna Hare? Uh -huh. Yes. Dean Evans? Yes. Sammy Kimball? Yes. OK, thank you, Council. Motion carries. That takes care of our uh, uh, budget mods. Uh, thank you, Carol, for uh, uh, presenting on them. This brings us to approval of Resolution 2201. Table Creek Treaty Annuity Drawdown. And who is going to present on that? I'll present on this. Sorry for my voice. It still hasn't gone back to normal yet. Um, <clears throat> this is the annuity drawdown that is done every year um, that pertains to the Table Creek Treaty. And we're just submitting this for uh, the first resolution of the year to support that treaty. Thank you for that. Um, Council, are there any questions or discussion on this treaty matter? Um, I just want to say thanks, Th Cynthia, for getting the resolution drafted. It, you know, uh, it's really important for us to honor our treaties, and this one is alive, and this is proof of it, you know. So um, it's always good to pass this um, resolution. Yes, I, I agree entirely. Uh, you know, this uh, we have a very splendid uh, treaty history of the Pawnee Nation between treaties that were entered into by our uh, chiefs on behalf of the nation with the United States government. And uh, I don't I don't see the uh, year of this particular treaty. But uh, it is the treaty uh, where uh, one of the provisions uh, provided a uh, an annual payment by the United States to the Pawnee Nation in perpetuity, and that means forever. And so uh, uh, at that time, that was a significant amount of uh, money. Uh, today, with the uh, 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 increasing uh, number of our membership the annuity checks get uh, smaller and smaller. And uh, I, I have heard and seen a lot of jokes and snide remarks, uh, but are about the size of that check. But I think uh, to me, what is most symbolic here is that that check, uh, as small as it may be uh, under under $10, uh, to each each and every uh, enrolled tribal member uh, is part of our legacy, part of your legacy, uh, and it's a symbol of uh, of uh, efforts of our uh, forebears to uh, protect the best interests of the nation through this treaty provision. And so, it's sort of a legacy that we all have, a shared legacy, and uh, I think it's uh, very symbolic in nature. So. Um, Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman, here for uh, uh, mentioning the nature and significance of this. Um, is, and I see your hand is still up. Uh, is yeah. it, did you have something to add, uh, Councilwoman? Yes, it's in Please the fourth do. whereas. In the fourth whereas, you'll see the year 1857. Oh, OK. Yes, 1857. And, they, and this uh, this provision uh, is for perpetuity, which means as long as the grass shall grow and the wind shall blow, or 30 days, whichever is sooner. I'll back. <laughs> no, it's forever. And this is evidence of that. So it is a living document. Um, so with that, yes. 
So I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2201. Thank a you. second. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Any uh, discussion on the motion, folks? Hearing that, call for the vote, please, sir. Jordan Cahill? Yes. George Gard, P. Yes. Carol Chapman? Yes. Cynthia Butler? Yes. Donna Hare? Uh -huh. Yes. Gene Evans? Yes. Sammy Kimball? Yes. Thank you, Council. Motion carries, and uh, thank you for that. Um, and uh, I think that will bring us then to this next item, which is discussion and or action on title insurance for the water's property. And um, Donna, would you uh, would you care to present on that or would you like me to? I would like for you to. OK. Um, Yes, um, as you as uh, everyone knows, uh, uh, before the Christmas break, uh, we uh, uh, closed on the Waters property, uh, 48 and a half acres uptown at a closing a, a realty office there. And I was present along with some of our staff members to uh, sign the documents on behalf of the nation. Uh, at that time, uh, we closed actually on two properties. So uh, one was this one, the Waters property, and then the other one was the larger property, the Merrimack property. And I noticed at that time that on the larger Merrimack property, uh, the nation took out title insurance for that property. However, the nation did not take out title insurance for this Waters property. And uh, 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 it's my recommendation that we we also take out the title insurance uh, for for this property as well. Uh, the reason I have two reasons for making that re uh, that recommendation to the council. Uh, the fr the first is uh, uh, that that was some part of a complicated transaction. It involved actually five separate uh, deeds to be put together to comprise that land sale. And so that kind of makes the title history a little bit complicated. And therefore, in my view, it warrants that added protection for this title insurance. Uh, secondly, um, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I do think that uh, uh, title insurance on fee tribal fee lands may well be a requirement from the BIA in order to get this land placed into the trust status. And so uh, uh, for that reason, I'll, I recommend that the uh, council go ahead and uh, uh, purchase title insurance for this property, just like what we did for the Merrimack property. I believe that this amount uh, for this insurance uh, would uh, come out of the ARP uh, funding uh, since the, that's where the uh, purchase price came out of uh, for for the uh, household uh, assistance program, and uh, I was told we were told at the time of closing that if we purchased the uh, uh, title insurance uh, promptly, uh, that I think it would cost the. Uh, and uh, Donna, you might have the figures in front of you. I, th I thought it was about five thousand. Uh, and the reason it was so cheap at that time is, is that the title work had already been done and it was fresh and current. But if we if we don't purchase it now and we late three to three or four months uh, with the passage of time, that price will go up because they'll have to conduct the title research all over again to make sure no developments occurred in the chain of title between. Uh, December 22 when, when we closed and say sometime this spring. So in order in order to save money, I, I would uh, recommend that we we uh, go ahead and uh, make a purchase decision now to get that taken care of. And so that that's my uh, recommendation to the council and, and uh, those are the reasons for it. And so um, I was trying to look uh, 
here on my um, email, uh, but I, I, I'm not able to find it at my fingertip. Uh, how much exactly this title insurance is? Uh, George, you might have that info. If so, yeah. uh, but anyway, uh, your your hand is up, and I'll recognize you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was quoted uh, by Lauren Quimby at a property. Um, it was they found out it was eight hundred and forty six dollars. Um, they had Keith Cheatham checking into it, uh, but I was quoted at about four fifteen today. So that's the number they gave me. It was eight forty six. Yes, thank you for that information. And so it's it's really a de minimis amount um, in comparison to everything else here regarding this uh, purchase. And so um, I think, and, and again, I think it come out of the uh, ARP budget. Um, so there we have it. Is there any other uh, questions, comments or concerns? President, uh, do we do we not have a draft resolution for the ARPS expenditure ready? Uh, no, I don't think. Uh, I guess we don't, unless there's uh, something that staff had prepared. Um, no, we. Do we actually need a uh, resolution, or can we get by with the motion? Right. Um, well, we, we've been set a precedence by spending ARPA money with resolutions so that we're keeping track of what's being spent. I would suggest a resolution. Okay. Would you like to um, um, try to do that now, or should you want this to be tabled so that we can draft this uh, document up? It's, up? it's up to you all. I think we probably have the, the time leeway to do it. If you would rather uh, do that, we could ask the uh, staff to draft up something and put it on our next agenda if you so desire. I don't think it would be pretty hard to do a resolution, but I would defer it to the um, treasurer since she's the chairperson of the COVID committee. Um, oh. And this hasn't gone through the committee, so I would lean on her advisement, my own self. So we want yes, to take so. to the COVID committee. We have a meeting on the 20th. I think that would still be timely if you so wish. Okay, we can put it on the agenda for the 20th. Okay. Okay, get it approved. All right. Okay. And uh, I see uh, Sammy's uh, hand is up. I'll recognize you at this yes. time. Uh, thank you, President Ekohawk. Um I'm in agreement with you that uh, title <laughs> insurance is really, really important during any type of uh, realty um, exchange and uh, I support, of course, spending the money on it, but I'd like to know um, in, in uh, future, since we're new at it and, and, you know, fell through the cracks, we haven't bought a lot of property, but maybe we'll just have like a little punch list to make sure, you know, moving forward yeah. and I, we can get this put together pretty easily within the planning area, a little punch list to make sure that all our um, I's are dotted and T's crossed moving forward. Yes, you know, that's an excellent idea because uh, I know uh, Donna's uh, committee, property committee, they they put a lot of time in this. Yeah, yes, and uh, it, it it was a new uh, area and we were kind of making the wheel as we went. So mm -hmm. uh, while, uh, while that is fresh in our minds, we ought to make a punch list. And I don't know, are there any volunteers? I know, uh, uh, Donna and uh, Donna might uh, have a better handle on what she went through, uh, but I know yeah. she put a lot of time into this. Donna, we can take it offline. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's out. do it together, Sammy. I, I just okay. Think, you know, I just wanted to put it out there for our um, yeah our member, you know, our our citizens to know that we are on it. It's it's, it's relatively new. Um, Field for us to buy properties, and this was just a miss, and we're going to get it fixed, and we're going to move forward. So, said, yeah, we'll sit down and we'll get through it with our committee. Yes, okay. Well, that's a good suggestion, and I, I think it just underscores the, I guess, historic nature of these land acquisitions. Mm -hmm. You know, we are our nation is growing, mm -hmm. and um, 
I think this more than doubles the size of our local uh, tribally owned land base. So mm -hmm. it's a pretty significant measure of mm -hmm. breaking new break breaking new ground actually. So um, so with that, I think uh, if if we want to just go ahead and table this then and bounce it back to the COVID committee for um, deliberation on it, that'd be fine. Is that okay, Ken Carol? We'll put that in your capable mm -hmm. hands of the committee there. Okay, uh, next item is the, um, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, I was, I was looking at Carol going, why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> okay, just add it to the list. <laughs> just as long as it's not a black hole, hey, China. I, I, I know uh, it's not. <laughs> um. OK, so let's do the next item, and that is discussion and or action intergovernmental relations with local governments. And um, uh, Donna, uh, may I ask if you could present on this item for us, please? Yes, I'll, I'll present. We know this um, intergovernmental affairs committee is is new under uh, President Echohawk, and it's really um, looking and addressing our external relationships with um, other bodies. And so one uh, one that we want to improve our, re, you know, develop a relationship with it is the city of Pawnee and to reach out to them. Another one, and I was kind of surprised I didn't see the, any of them at our bridge um, um, dedication uh, was um, the county commissioners. And so I would like to also reach out to them because, um, you know, Jerry schedules one of them. He worked with at the BIA for years, um, knows a lot about our lands. Um, and then uh, Charlie Brown is also uh, he's Pawnee and he came from our street, our, our transportation uh, division. And so I'd like to reach out to them. And, you know, I don't know the third commissioner but I'd like to reach out to them and try to develop a relationship because we can really do a lot with these um, ARPA funds, with the roads, I mean, with the infrastructure bill, with, you know, um, trying to get the road to our cemetery, you know, um, on Knight Street. That's been, that's come up in council and, and about how how bad that road is and, and 4th Street, the old Highway 18. So I think that if we do, you know, reach out and develop some relationships with these uh, local entities, um, it's it's going to be beneficial for our community. And and this inter, um, intergovernmental committee, it's, it can be massive, you know, because there, there's all this state legislation going on, you know, and so um, we're just, this is our, you know, kind of our, our I, I've tracked that some of the state legislation, but I haven't really got a formal mechanism, you know, in place yet. So this is a start, you know, a good start for us is, um, you know, to um, develop relation, a better relationship, better working relationship with the city of Pawnee and with um, the county commissioners. Also, Donna, before I recognize Sammy, uh, uh, we had also uh, talked about um, uh, intergovernmental relations with our area tribes, and in particular, the Shilako yes. tribes. And yes. So is that is that also something yes. that you wanted to include? Yeah. I've been trying to get a meeting with the Shilako, um Treaty Tribes, and I would, you know, like um, I, I know that you're interested in attending. I think Sammy would probably be interested in attending also. Um, but when I talked with um, Chairman Shotton um, last last year, he had um, they haven't met since before COVID, and there's been changes in um, tribal. So um, if we, if, if Sammy, if you could reach out, if um, uh, Walter, if you could reach out to him, uh, I would just really like for us to do something with the Shilako campus and 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 get going on that. Thank thank you uh, uh, for that. I, I'll recognize uh, Councilwoman Kipple. Yes, uh, uh, this, this just tags along with Donna's uh, talk about the uh, county um, county folks as well. Um, I don't know if you're aware that uh, Ira Fields Jr. Poncho Fields is actually the mayor of Merrimack 
and they collaborate between the tribe and the county to take care of their roads and such. I think it's pretty awesome. And they've also contracted with the tarot, with Pawnee Tarot, to maintain their, their cemetery out there. So I don't know if anybody's aware of that, but it, it's, it's really good, um, a, it'd be good, a great relationship to have with a small uh, community like that. You know, it, it's very small, but they still, uh, you know, the, the tribes uh, are, the Pawnee police, uh, police still monitor that area. Um, and I, I think it's wonderful. Uh, and I'm sure there's smaller communities like Skeety and all that, that, you know, we have tribal members that live up there and, and, and what have you. And I'm glad to reach out and try to help you with uh, Mr. Shotton and uh, also Oliver Little, Little Cook, who is the uh, president for uh, Poncas. So we can try to establish some type of, uh, you know, uh, conversation with them. I'll have to find out who's got Tonkawa and a cause, but we can all work on that. But I wanted to share about Merrimack because I thought that was kind of awesome. Yes, well, I'm I'm <laughs> glad that you did that. I'm glad that you did, and I I would uh, I very much be in favor of uh, reaching out to uh, Mayor Fields there at at Merrimack. Uh, we did make that huge land purchase in, in yep. right uh, nearly adjacent to uh, Merrimack. Mm -hmm. And I see no reason why we shouldn't be uh, working with with uh, Merrimack. Now that might be the cutoff, in my view. You can't get much smaller than uh, Merrimack, <laughs> and if you do, uh, there's uh, you're looking at almost at a ghost town kind of a sit scenario. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> but um, um, I'm I'm. Um, Real excited along with Donna about our intergovernmental affairs committee and the work that it does. And, and uh, I think it's very prudent on our part to uh, uh, reach out to the city government, especially with the new mayor um, and uh, and the county uh, commissioners. Uh, again, uh, we have looks like we got some friends or potential friends on, on the board of county commissioners uh, as well, because um, we do have a it's all will inure to the benefit of our tribal members here in the community that it's almost incumbent upon our local grassroots governments to work together as best that we can on on for the greater good, the common good of the community. And, and uh, I, I, I am thinking that that uh, and I think it was mentioned that uh, um, lots, a lot of these uh, infrastructure monies are there's categories um, for uh, those applicants that are uh, regional in nature or more than one uh, governmental entity. So. I think there's areas that we could work together with the city and the county and conceivably Merrimack as well. <laughs> and uh, by the same token, it, I, it also makes imminent um, political sense to me that we uh, try to establish a working relationship with all of the five, four or five tribes in our area, you know, and especially those that, that uh, come into the Chilaco Indian School. I don't know if it's four or five tribes that come into that property, but uh, uh, it just makes good sense, you know, because uh, uh, we do have our uh, statewide uh, 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 programs, but I, we're talking about our regional area here in northern, north central Oklahoma. And so I, I would be in favor of, the, of that. And I, I just in the same uh, way that I think we want to have begin having joint meetings with our uh, Nishero Council, I think the same would be true with the city county, the city government, at least for starters. And then maybe we can broaden it to also include the uh, county as well, and uh, conceivably establish some sort of a association of local governments for our area here. You know, so. Um, and I think it just makes good sense for the nation to throw out the olive branch. We have Dr. Evans on our uh, council, and he's uh, very well connected, you know, in Pawnee and on the school board and, and such. Uh, and many of you all have special relationships as well. So 
let's let's use those relationships and uh, forge, forge uh, uh, good, strong working relationships with our local governmental uh, neighbors here. And uh, that that's I think that's the thought. And uh, I don't know how we would begin implementing uh, that, but I think it would probably emanate from the Intergovernmental Affairs uh, Committee under Donna's uh, uh, leadership. There is the chair with the support of the committee and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, putting something in place. And uh, but uh, I, I, th I think uh, we just wanted to re register it with the council. We had a wonderful uh, 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 reopening of the Green Bridge and the mayor was present. And uh, um, so I think uh, time might be right to be in doing that. You know, that some someone was telling me that there, we have some people uptown that have never crossed that Green Bridge <laughs> in their lifetimes that are elder, elder, elder people. And I hardly know that we exist. Well, I'd like to change that. I really would. I'd like to. I'd like to see where we can work together. Excuse me. So anyway, uh, were you looking on any ac uh, action, uh, Donna, uh, regarding this, or is this informational in nature? The informational in nature, and um, just letting the council know that this is what we want to do. And if there's any objections, yeah. you know, we could hear them now. And uh, Secretary uh, Gardapi, your hand has been up, sir, and uh, I recognize you at this time, and thank you for your patience, sir. Oh, no, yeah. While we're on the subject, and I'm just, um, I'm kind of ignorant on how the, uh, how that land up there works or how the treaty works with Shilako. I mean, if we want to do some kind of in economic venture, do we have to get permission from the other tribes up there? I mean, I don't. I don't know how it works. I'm just, I've tried to find stuff on our, our teams and I can't find anything on it, but um, I was just wondering who, who could tell me, you know, I'm just curious how that, how that works. Donna, I could, um, yeah, I can answer that. So, you know, we all have big acreages and we like 700 acres up there at Shilako and, and those, those we control ourselves. We make our decision, it's pasture land. And so that's a decision that's solely our decision on what we do with that land. Now, it's the campus. It's the campus of uh, Shilako that is owned by all five tribes, and we all have to decide what to do with it. And that UML was the last one in there. They did some, um, they were out of OSU, and uh, it was, a, I think, a kind of a military testing um, that was going on. And um, so anyway, they they renovated some of the buildings. I want to think about five or six. And so I'd really like to get in there before those buildings start, you know, um, going down, you know, so that so, yeah, that's that's how it works, George. Okay. It would be all five tribes making that decision. Thank you. I, I just didn't know. And and also I wanted to mention that, you know, from housing level, we do have a meeting scheduled with the mayor next Wednesday to discuss uh, several initiatives between that we can collaborate with, with housing and, and the city. So um, those are positive steps as well with that intergovernmental sort of, you know, but as, as housing, so. Excellent. Yeah, I think, I think the Shilako lands uh, were conveyed to the tribes in the fashion that Donna mentioned when this Indian school became abandoned and, I think it was an act of Congress that uh, was involved there uh, to convey the interest to the tribes, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I believe it, it, it was in. Be, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I believe it was in uh, 1986. Yes, I, and I, I that was uh, predate. I, I was. Last time I was there, gosh, it must have been the 70s. <laughs> when I took one of my cousins up there and dropped her yeah. off or go to school there. But um, anyway, um, and, and that, that's got economic development potential up there. You know, we had mm -hmm. uh, uh, talked about it for other uses, and especially if we're going to be hiring an, uh, a business development specialist. Uh, but I, I, I do think that it might be interesting for us to take a little field trip to go up to Shilako at some point 
and actually tour the campus and and get get eyes on our own uh, property. I think we have a fairly lucrative uh, cattle lease there of that property. We're leasing it now for cattle purposes, but I'd like to see it. I don't. I've never seen it, you know. And I think as stewards, and you may want to see if you could arrange a field trip down and bring along the whole property committee as well as interested council members to go up and take a look see on, on our ownership up there uh, anyway is there anything any further discussion on this item no that's uh, it okay for me okay um well um i guess we could move on um uh, Next item is this, this this discussion and or action on uh, uh, M36 uh, PLLC Tribal Advocacy Group proposal. Uh, now this, uh, I have to abstain from this because uh, Lael Echohawk is uh, uh, one of my nieces. And so uh, I've uh, abstained from this particular matter. And so I'll have to, uh, basically abstain and uh, Donna, I think this was your agenda item. So let me just turn this over, this discussion over to you, if I may. Okay, thank you, President Echohawk. So we had a little bit of a lead in for this and talking about the intergovernmental uh, committee, intergovernmental affairs committee and, and the work that we're doing. And so there is um, even keeping up with the federal uh, what's coming down at the federal level is uh, really uh, overwhelming, and and so um, what what we've done is Lael is a member of our committee, but she is um, inside of Washington D.C. She's connected uh, with this administration and um, and has a lot and has some influence, and so. Um, what she proposes to do, and it's up on, uh, I, is it up on the screen? Oh, well, y'all have copies of it, and I'll just uh, go ahead and, and summarize what she's, you know, uh, proposing to do is to identify and monitor and analyze legislative and administrative developments that could impact Pawnee Nation, our programs, our services, legal rights, natural resources, economic development opportunities, and government-to-government -government relations with the United States. And also assisting in the uh, development and implementation of the nation's uh, federal uh, legislative and administrative um, agenda, advising and assisting in drafting appropriate and necessary responses to pending legislation, regulatory notice, and administrative actions. And I want to say here is that she has already been doing this and she's worked very uh, closely with Earth Justice and the uh, other attorneys that that we have in dealing with our uh, EPA issue, and uh, she's done great work there, and and has done a lot for us. Um, and so, also, um, she is looking at um, advising and assisting in drafting appropriate and necessary responses to pending legislation, regulatory notice, and administrative actions advocating on behalf of the nation before Congress and administration, the administration, and assisting uh, the nation with um, establishing necessary and appropriate relationships with members of Congress and elected and appointed uh, career administration, administration officials that will uh, advance the nation's federal agenda and protect its interest. And she's already done a lot of work with this. She um, has, uh, has has a relationship with Libby, Libby Washburn, and um, she was instrumental in getting uh, President Echo Hawk uh, as one of the speakers at the um, uh, President Biden's uh, White House uh, tribal leaders meeting, and and that is um, that's very few people uh, got to speak, and and President Echo Hawk did a great great job um, representing Pawnee Nation. And so let me go back up to the, my. So. Um, she's also proposing to um, provide timely updates on federal activity and national uh, 
tribal initiatives to the nation's uh, Intergovernmental Affairs Committee and participating in interfairs efforts that advance and protect the nation's interest and initiatives. So that's the scope of work that um, that is proposed. Our our governmental um, intergovernmental um, committee, inter intergovernmental affairs committee, we approved this last August, and um, and it hasn't really moved forward. I I uh, so what I needed to do is to bring it forward for action today. Um, I've talked to Brian about um, identifying funds, but I haven't been able. Um, so. My phone, I have been without my phone, so my my um, communications is has been a little bit limited just to emails. So um, I thought I think that he has um, identified some funds and I could go ahead and let him um, address that. Are you there, Brian? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Council. Uh, yes, I talked to Harrison and everything. Uh, and um, the look. We were looking at two different budgets. We were either looking at um, possibly some um, <clears throat> BIA funding or the PBC budget. Um, and with it incorporating like some lobbying work and things like that, we can't use federal funds for that. So we can, uh, we do have, um, pull it up. We have about 17 grand. Um, to cover the four thousand dollars out of PBC budget out of professional services, but we're just restricted on federal funding since there's a little. If there is any lobbying work, we don't want to get in. Uh, we're just restricted. We can't do that with federal funds. So, uh, but PBC funding, we do have uh, funding to cover the costs. Okay. Um, Vice President, I see that your hand is up. I'll recognize you, sir. Yes, thank you, President Eckhock. Um, Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Hare, for presenting this tonight. Um, I was reading through her proposal, and from what I what I gather on that, I just kind of figure that's that's what the Intergovernmental Affairs Com Committee, I think, is supposed to do already. I didn't see why we would want to go ahead and hire someone to do what I would assume the Intergovernmental Affairs Committee should already be doing. And then based off of Brian's um, report on that, it doesn't seem like we have the money to be able to do it anyways. Um, that's just kind of my take on it. Let's see if I could um, kind of respond to that. Um, a lot of tribes um, normally, um, uh, especially, yes. Oh, um, are you abstaining from just uh, this portion, or are you abstaining from the whole entire? Well, I, I'd like I'd like to just uh, elaborate just a little bit to try to be helpful here. Um, well, I would hope uh, uh, Councilman Hare could. She's the chair of the Intergovernmental Affairs Committee. Okay. Okay, so um, we really don't have that um, that um, level of expertise with our committee, and we don't have that connection, you know, in in Washington, um, and, and that level of work that that Lael does is is um, very very high, um, and you know, our committees have have really changed and you know before our committees are charged with so much to do now and and it's difficult you know to do everything and we but we want to do it in the best way you know that we can so um i don't know i i feel that she's she's done some great work for us and uh, would continue to do some great work for us and really keep us in in the know on you know what's what's going on in washington because she is inside the what the beltway. Did did you did you not say that she was already doing this for the committee though? Is she, she just wanting is she just wanting to get paid? Is that what it is? She, it's to do she's doing it for the committee, but um it's really probably to do more, you know, to do more than what she's doing now. Right now she's been working with the EPA, been working with the White House, been sending us information. And and she would she would go on, you know, she would do this anyway. It's an honor for her to serve, but it's really expecting a lot out of her, you know, um, 
as a committee member, what we're asking her to do. Okay. Um, I guess one of the reasons, I guess, for my pushback on this um, is, I mean, it, it, I mean, it seems that she's done a good job as far as serving on the committee. And my understanding is that committee members are not paid uh, individuals, they're volunteer individuals. Um, if she wants to uh, step out of the committee role and be that, that I guess, as Brian would put it, as a uh, lobbyist type for the Pawnee Nation, uh, that would be something that we'd have to look at again, though. I mean, we can't use federal funds to to pay for her. Um, so we would have to find those funds within the Pawnee Nation. And so if we're using tribal dollars, this is kind of the kind of what rubs against me, I guess, too, is that, um, you know, we have two young men who've been trying to be hired as language instructors for the Pawnee Nation for almost about eight years. And we haven't we haven't put that much effort into trying to locate that much money as what we're trying to do today. And so um, because of that fact, I'd have to be a no vote on this. But I do appreciate the, well, the presentation. Yeah, but I have to I have to disagree with you on um, putting out effort on trying to find funding for um, our teachers, because I know that there has been, you know, efforts made. But they're not hired as uh, right. Instructors. Yeah, they may not hire yet, but. Yeah, but there has been a lot of effort made. Uh, let's see. I see a number of hands up. I didn't notice who uh, who raised their hand first. Does anyone know? I think uh, George. I'll go George, Carol, and then the Attorney General. Yeah, I just had a real quick question. How, how much money are we talking about? I didn't see a, a price in there or a, a fee price. The retainer is 4000 a month. 4000 a month. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we appreciate the work she's done, but um, yeah, I'm a little, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Carol? Yes, um, you know, I'm on the Intergovernmental Committee, and I must say, you know, Lael is a bright young lady. My concern is that we have several attorneys now on a lot of our committees, and back to Jordan's point of serving on the committee and then pay, now taking one out to pay them a, a fee. And I think it comes to 50,000, doesn't it? Four times or something like that. Um, and I say, yeah, and uh, I, I just think that it's gonna set precedent that other committee attorneys are gonna come forward now and ask to be paid also for their expertise because there are many other attorneys that are just as qualified too on the other committees and that's that's just uh i think uh, the message that we're going to give is now that we we are going to be able to start taking attorneys off of committees and paying for them that's not to say her work is not important you know but i i just uh, agree with uh councilman canujo and gardapi on that that's just my comments thanks thank you um Attorney General. Thank you. Um, what I see her proposal is, is basically a staffer for the nation. To be able to have access to decision makers, carry the message of the Pawnee Nation, know what's going on, when it's going on, uh, is extremely valuable. Uh, there's a lot of volunteers on the intergovernmental affairs, but volunteers can only do much, so much. They have to do their work when everything else is done. If you t accept Lael's um, proposal, she actually is working for the committee and the, and the tribe. Uh, and a lot of folks may not appreciate the value of having somebody in the beltway, but I can tell you it's very important. Uh, when I was at the nation, the tribe, when I first took over, the tribe had a lawyer, lobbyist, big firm in D.C. and it cost a bunch of money. We so, saw so much value in it, we actually hired four or five people, had an office at the bottom of the, the hill, and actually NCAI and Cherokee Nation were the two groups that Congress, and particularly Indian Affairs, 
in the Oklahoma delegation went too quickly to get answers, input, uh, and information. Because when bills are moving or when um, colloquy letters or letters to fellow folks are being transmitted, these staffers and congressmen need something quick, succinct, reliable, and with authority. And so uh, they would turn to NCAI and they would return turn to the Cherokee Nation. I think three other tribes had standing lobbying groups, offices there. The Navajos, they had 20 something maybe folks up there, but they could not respond quickly. And so they were fairly ineffective. Um, so I'm saying is that what somebody like Leal, and I'm not, not, and she's very talented. I've been on calls, and she's quality. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to open doors. Uh, can actually get you the foot in the door quicker, and actually return have a return on, on your investment in terms of federal funds, programs, solving problems. Uh, and so it's a, it, it's a it's some money, that's correct, but it's a good investment. Uh, and so as I can't speak as your attorney necessarily in this decision, but I can give you my experience is that our DC office is extremely valuable. Uh, and having somebody on the Hill and within the Beltway that can answer quickly for the Pawnee Nation, or you can get her to, to talk to the people that need to make decisions, really is a great investment for the long term. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Vice President. Yes, thank you, President. Um, again, I just uh, would say is that we don't have uh, the money Cherokee Nation has. We don't have the money Navajo Nation has. We have Pawnee Nation money, and we don't have that money to be able to hire uh, people who can go and represent us like that at this time. Um, obviously, our, our goal and hope is that one day we do. Um, that's why we're doing what we're doing as a council. That's why we're um, making the decisions we are for the betterment of our people. Um, but we just don't have the, the deep pockets as these other tribes do, unfortunately, at this time. So, uh, again, that's why I would have to just be no on this. But thank you. Uh, Secretary Gardapi, see your hand is up. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, state that I would be opposed to having a lobbyist. Um, an important lobbyist uh, to work in our favor eventually. And, you know, when we got more revenues coming in on proposed actions, business proposals, I, I honestly would not have a problem with that. It's just, you know, make valid points right now. I mean, we have other, I think, more important expenditures that we need to look at first before we look at, at doing a lobbyist. Um, and, and 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 as good a job as she does and important she is, I still I would still um, probably be a no vote just because of the our financial situation still. Okay, uh, Councilwoman Kimball, I see your hand is up. And your your mic your mute is on. Thank you. Yes, I love to do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, with all due respect, um, I feel the same way as Vice President Canujo and support um, his comments and, and George's comments. Um, you know, uh, with all due respect, we, we just aren't there. We're not Cherokees. We're not Navajos. They've got a lot of money. Uh, we unfortunately are, are, are getting there, and I think this is just going to take some time. So my vote tonight would be a no. Thank you. Okay. Any anything uh, else, folks? Any other comments on uh, on Donna's proposal? Um, I have a comment. Is um, this is one of the reasons I was that it took took a while to bring this forward? You know, is because we have attorneys on every committee. 
And so that was a concern. And then also, you know, the money part and and just some just trying to get it through, you know, um, the, the committees that we would need to. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's all I have. And I do really feel that that it would be beneficial. And if it's voted down tonight, um, she'll still work for us um, and, you know, continue to continue doing the work that she is. And I hope that we could revisit it, you know, and because it is important to have somebody in the beltway. If you haven't gone up and, and worked the hill, um, then you don't you don't know everything that's involved. And I've, I've worked at the central office in uh, BIA and um, that's where the senators and the, you know, um, congressmen would come and, and want answers. You know, every everything, every letter they got had to be answered. And so um, we would help help with that. But but yeah, she would she would she's an asset and would be an asset. And so I just would um, hope that we would, you know, if it doesn't pass tonight, that we would consider it uh, another time. Okay, so where does this leave us, folks? Do you want to uh, make a motion, or is there a motion, or what? What do we want to do? Table it, or what? What is there? What are the wishes of the group, Donna? What do you propose at this stage? Um, I don't know what good tabling would do right now. I think that if we tabled, it might just stay on the agenda. Um, so I would probably say we would probably need a vote now. Would we need a vote? Or would we need a vote or just uh, no action needed? Oh yeah, no action. We could do that because it's discussion or a action. Yes, yes, that's a good suggestion, Jordan. We could just uh, go with the discussion for now, and and maybe look at it for later. You know, I can I can I can keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Donna, for bringing that before the council tonight. Thank you. Um, well, as we, as we move on, uh, I just wanted to say uh, that in 2022, I'm trying to ramp up uh, some work between the Pawnee Nation and the federal government and its agencies. Uh, we have, uh, we're in the middle of some very important government-to-government uh, -government consultations with the EPA under our government consultation statute that implicate uh, vital tribal interests uh, that are ongoing. Uh, we are opening up a front with the Department of Interior on this uh, Pawnee Nation oil and gas moratorium with our oil and gas work group. Um, and um, uh, I know that Lael has been extremely helpful on both fronts. And we may not be the Navajo Nation or the Cherokee Nation, but we do have some vital tribal interests at stake uh, that are being ramped up in 2021. Uh, so um, uh, I just want want it to be known that uh, this is a need for a, a need that needs to be uh, looked at at the earliest uh, opportunity if we're to protect our a vital interest that we do have in both of these uh, matters, uh, one with EPA, the other with the Department of Interior, also uh, in, involve, uh, could also conceivably involve settlement of the pending uh, uh, litigation between the Pawnee Nation and, and Secretary Holland uh, regarding oil, the oil and gas and fracking matters too. So these, uh, it's not a luxury, that we're talking about here, we're talking about uh, protecting vital tribal interests and core legal rights of this nation. So with that, um, I think uh, we should be ready to move into executive session. We have a couple matters to discuss there. So, or is there anything uh, on the COVID? Oh, we're gonna talk about the COVID update when we come out, is that is that the plan folks? I'll make a motion to go in executive session. Mm -hmm. I'll second. OK, uh, call for the vote, sir. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. George Gardner, yes. Carol Chapman. Yes. Cynthia Butler. Yes. Donna Hare. Oh, yes. Dean Evans. Yes. Sammy Kimball. Yes. Okay, thank you, Council. Uh, and uh, let us make our way into executive session. Guy, if you could turn off the recording, we'll uh, proceed to uh, 